and welcome back. It's another weekend and I've managed to grab a few hours to come down to the shed and try and get this simulator build finished. Um, so, what I've been up to this week, obviously I've been working quite hard, uh, but I have managed to sneak some time off and go out and try and find some adjustable feet for the bottom of the sim. So I want to put six feet on the bottom, one to try and raise it up more so to make sure we've got the sim nice and stable on any surface. So I have found these and not exactly what I was looking for, but that's normal out where I live in the Middle East, uh, so we just have to make do and improvise. So I've got these, they're a, a metal bottom with a, uh, unfortunately an imperial thread coming out. I'm gonna glue some rubber onto the bottom and stop them skidding around. And then uh, the imperial thread's gonna be a bit of a, a bugger. But luckily I have a friend who is in this shed, who I shared the, uh, the shed with, and he's into American cars. So I'm gonna go and raid his parts bin in a minute, try and find some imperial nuts to go on those feet, and then we can get them welded on. Also, as far as paint goes, I was thinking about painting the, uh, the simulator with my spray uh, gun outside. Um, but I want to try and keep it pretty DIY and simple. So I had an epiphany, I was in the DIY shop and I managed to find a can of truck bed coating. Um, so the idea of this is it's really hard wearing, it gives a good textured finish and I can also spray that straight onto bare metal without primer. So hopefully we can get some of that on there today. We've got a bit of grinding to do, clean some of the welds up. Um, I want it all smooth and flat and then uh, we'll get the paint on. I've done a test with the paint, it looks pretty good. It's got a nice cool uh, textured finish on it. So hopefully this will work and we've got a nice cheap solution to, uh, to get some paint on. Other than that, we need to just get on with it, I suppose. Um, we are gonna move on to the seat, uh, but that's gonna be a separate episode. But for now, we're gonna weld that other bar on. We're gonna block some of the ends off, load of grinding, and then uh, we'll move on to the, uh, get the feed on get them mounted up and then we can get on and get the thing painted. And that is the plan today. Let's, let's crack on, let's talk in more action. going pretty good I'm gonna uh, just change what I was originally gonna do with this pedal box originally I was gonna put some rib nuts on the inside here but it's just gonna be a nightmare to slide it backwards and forwards and fiddling about trying to put the, uh, the bolts in so what I'm gonna do is weld these brackets together here to make a, a right angle and then fix that to the foot plate and then we'll actually do some rear nuts on the top I might just open this up as one big long channel a couple of bolts to hold it down and then we can slide the pedal box backwards and forwards and nice and easy so I've cut the plates out so we we'll just get them tapped together draw some holes in weld them to the plate it should be pretty quick and easy and then that's done that's the uh, pedal box sorted for now the reason I want to do it like that as well as um, in the future when I upgrade and get some better pedals I can uh, easily modify the base so that we can fit some some decent pedals but for now we've got those Logitech ones so 
they'll have to do. Anyway, that's the plan, let's get on. Happy with that. Um, it's in a nice and size, so we better get some bolts sorted for the top. Then we're on to grinding, then, uh, then we can get on to painting. That's it. We're on the last step, it's nearly finished. Alright, let's get going. We need to cut a, uh, I don't know what the technical word is. We need to cut a, the hole, well, we need to drill the holes in uh, this plate and we need to cut it out so it can slide up and down on the bolts, you know, riv nut into the sim. So I've drawn, I'll show you how I did this. Um, I don't know if it'll work, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple idea I had to figure out. Here we go. So because the sim rig isn't quite square, and that probably isn't quite square, um, Partly due to my fabrication skills, which are um, never quite square, but also due to the fact that I haven't really measured. And I'm in a rush today, I don't really want to do much measuring and trying to figure out. There's no point when I'm this far down. I know this in rig isn't square. So, how am I going to get these, um, these holes lined up so they slide up and down freely on the, uh, on the runners of the, uh, the rig? So I was musing about it for a few minutes, um, not too long, and I came up with this solution. So, on the rails, I measured uh, a 25 mil box section to a 12 and a half mil um, to get a center line that runs down both rails. Um, as you can see, my measuring isn't that good because that one's probably over by a mil. Um, I'll blame my eyes, I'm getting old, I can't see. So my, uh, my tolerance is now are, are pretty bad. Anyway, drew the two lines on. Drop the plate with some force in the middle. And then what I did, I ran it down. And then as you can see, all I did, popped the ruler on and matched up the uh, top of the plates with the line on the runners. And I slid it backwards and forwards. And they match so that gives me one it gives me a uh, a line to drill in and cut the slot out in the top plate but it also gives me a line to follow to try and drill and uh, install the rib nuts correctly so what we'll do we'll cheat a bit because it's not a race car so we can uh, we can drill the holes out a little bigger 
on the top plate so we've got a bit of tolerance here because that's the quick and easy way so anyway that's what I came up with uh, it was like a two minute solution to a, um, a ten minute problem I don't know see if it'll work I think it'll work I don't know if it doesn't work we'll, we'll do something else we'll just weld it in and it won't be adjustable because it's taking too long I want to get finished with the race anyway so we've got the lines there did have a cinder punch got it in my pocket ah this is really cool um Stabler center punch it is awesome I've had a, uh, a top tool one that I've been using for years which has driven me mad because it never works when you push it down it doesn't always click and put a punch in but this thing got it off Amazon I'll see if I can find a link to it it's a genuine one it's a little expensive but well worth buying so uh, yeah if you're after a, a center punch Stabler one brilliant So sharp, so precise, really nice click. Um, that's helped my measuring quite a bit. It's still really bad, but it has helped it. Anyway, let's get on. And I reckon these holes need to be around about 50 mil apart. So that's 100 mil. That's, yeah, that's 100 mil ish. Um, so if we find. 50 mil for the center, 25 mil each side. Oh god, 50 and a bit. Close enough. So 25 each side. We'll give him like 50. Yep, that's 60. Right, that gives me my uh, holes at 50 mil apart. Damn, pretty good. Right, so, got my two holes there, so I'm going to draw a hole in um, either end. They're 50 mil apart. So we'll draw those holes um, on the draw press, and then I'm going to try and carefully cut two lines down to join them together to cut out the uh, section in between with the angle grinder which I'm not rating as being very good um, but yeah we'll give it a go see if we can make it neat and tidy so I'll probably go oversize on the holes you use M4s so I'll probably go 6mm on the holes give myself a bit of uh, wiggle room <laughs> to work with and yeah, we'll see how that goes <laughs> to uh, either resign this one to the scrap heap or take it and get the uh, probably buy a new motor for it because it's it's knackered when I bought it I bought it in New Zealand and someone had chopped the front off it which is real weird um, and scared the hell out of me when I used it because I had the belt flapping around right in your face so made myself have a little bit of drift um, aluminium plate so a little bit of drift plate on the top, a couple of rivets, just to try and make myself feel a bit safer. But I don't know. It was it was really cheap, and um, to be fair, it it gets it done. It just can't go over like eight mil. It, it doesn't want to know anything over eight mil. Anyway, so there's the holes um, drilled in. Job's good. What we're trying to do now is um, make a cut slice that center section out so we've got a nice slidey rail that's the next job Um, she's pretty rough Whoop. there we go so we get in there with the uh, 
hopefully I made it big enough now I can get my file in. I'm going to try and clean all that up and make it look pretty. And then, uh, yeah, then we're good to go. Keep moving forward, bit of filing now. So my, uh, my round hole has ended up a little more square. Stop moving. But yeah, that'll do the job. There's some holes in there. We can tidy those up a bit more later, but I am over firing. All right, so got it in and out. And we slide forward. And the lines match up. So what we can do now is drill the holes. And then uh, put the rivet nuts in, and that's that done. And tidy up the, uh, the slots a bit more to file. I'll make them a bit neater. I might open them up a bit more as well. Just make them look tidy, and then yeah, that's it. On to grinding. All right, let's get some holes drilled. All right, so here's an update. We are doing pretty good. We're on the home stretch now. So I've got the foot plate bolted in. Got the rivet nuts in there. Um, slotted out the bracket that all fits up pretty sweet so we've got three jobs left to do first job is cable management um, so the cables for the screen and the uh, steering wheel and pedals are going to run down here and I'd like them to be kind of neat and tidy so we need to um, strap or fix them to that bar so what i'm thinking is uh, another little trick we learned from the race cars which is to take a uh, a normal washer bend it in half and we're just going to tack them on and the idea is then we can run the cable the cable actually sit down here and then we can uh, cable tie it all together so it's all nice and neat so we're going to weld three of those down one two three down the bottom to keep that cable or keep all those cables nice and tidy playstation is probably going to sit down here for now until obviously we upgrade to the uh, to the pc because that is going to happen um so yeah let's get on and make some washers get them tacked on next job after that's a lot of grinding um, get it all tidied up ready for paint and then we can dig into the seat after that and get that uh let's get that seat sorted out i think that's pretty much it then we'll get it all painted up bolt it back together and go play some racing so there we go it's looking pretty cool i'm happy with it so far really happy with how that pedal box turned out um bit of a change of plan to what i'd originally thought of but that's looking pretty good so yeah let's get on let's make these washes up Okay, so got myself a couple of washers and it's real simple. Just gonna pop them in the vise. You can probably do a pair of pliers to be fair. So you want them about halfway, center of the hole, rip it together, hammer, bigger the better. Tap it over to 90 degrees. And you just want to make it so that it's a, uh, a V shape. So yeah, nice and simple. We'll tack them on, they'll look pretty tidy then. Done. Let's go tack them on. Okay, we've got them tacked on. So, let's see. there we go. So, not looking too bad at all. Um, I actually ended up putting four on, so I did one down there at the bottom, and then uh, work my way up, two, three, and then four, and you can see there, so it's pretty cool trying all the camera steady, so you can just pop your cable tie through the back, the cable actually sits through the middle there, keeps it all nice and uh, Come on, focus in. It's a neat. So that's that job done. Uh, what do we got next? Grinding. I hate it.
cheap old uh, lacquer thinners. Cheap as chips. Got an F1 car on it, so must be good. We're going full, full seal. We're doing is trying to get all the grease and dirt off the, uh, off the steel. Wipe on, wipe off. this truck bed coating um, just want to spray it on I was going to use a spray gun but this is a bit more DIY so Rust-Oleum truck bed this is it'll go straight on no primer required so just give it a shake paint the, uh, the candy There is the frame and uh, also done the pedal box, uh, the pedal holder as well, the pedal plate, that's what we call it, pedal plate. Um, so this is looking mint. So as, as I said, we just painted it with um, aerosol truck bed liner and it's given this really great um, finish. It's like a textured, uh, textured finish, like gritty. Um, and it's really hard wearing. Now this paint was so cool. Um, sprayed direct onto bare metal. I gave the metal a good clean up. Um, we did two coats, so one light coat, just a key coat, and then a, a kind of heavier coat over the top. Don't go too heavy, because it does run quite easily. It comes out of the can real hard. Um, so you've got to hold the can a fair way away. Don't get too close with it. Um, and then just, yeah, two light coats, and it's come up superb. Um, one rookie error I did make, and this is me, this is like engineering 101 with box section. So box section um, is made with a seam, it's got a weld down the middle. <laughs> Whenever you're welding you should try and put your seams on the inside, or at least trying to match it up, and I've, I don't know, I've had a real blonde moment. Um, <laughs> So I've got seams on some sides and, and not on others, and it is just showing through the paint. But you know what? Tough. It's there. It's done. You know, I'll learn for the next one, and I'll make sure I don't um, do that again. But yeah, it's looking pretty pretty mint. Um, the pedal box has come up real nice with the paint. So just got it laid on there for the moment. But that's that's looking pretty cool. For the amount of uh, time and, and uh, money that paint costs. I don't think you can get much of a better finish. This is the TV stand, so I'm going to blank the top off. Um, obviously, we need to do a bit of welding on the bottom, uh, get that welded up nice and tight. And then I'm just not happy with this. Is I don't know. I was having a, a sleepy moment when I tacked that up, so we'll try and clean these welds up because they're not looking fantastic at all on either side. So a bit of tidying up to do there. Um, also, we got these spatter mark so little bits of spatter um, and I hate those they show through the paint um, the paint I'm using they won't show up too much but they're just really annoying we've got a nice little lump there so we're just going to knock those off and then we can get that cleaned up and uh, painted we've also got a bit of an issue on the back so where the steel tube is quite thin section so where we clamp it up um, you can as you see there it's just pulling in the uh, the box section so I'm probably going to make up a little plate um, with the right center of holes um, it's quite thick probably two mil plate that will just sit on the back and act like a, a bit of a spacer and it should dissipate the load and just stop that closing up that box section so the steering wheel holder um, is looking pretty good just need a bit of tidying up now I'm not happy so what I had to do to get this bend um, in the steel plate was actually cut it so you cut it halfway down um, and then fold it over in the vise and then what we do is where we cut it we put a bead of weld down and grind it up now that all works out pretty good but again 
um, just from a world I didn't quite get enough um, weld into the groove so we've got this funny little groove down here so I'm just going to run another bead of weld across here grind that up and make that look pretty don't really need to do it but yeah just it's an annoyance it'll be there something that bugs me um, and again a bit of spatter to clean up the other side isn't looking too bad at all um, so we're just going to tidy up this corner here just so it looks a bit neater and tidier but yeah you can see there with the, the cut line and then the weld down the middle. So you get quite a nice bend. Um, by the time we tweak that up with a with a uh, file and a bit of grinding, it'll look pretty sweet. Once we've done that, we can get some paint on. Okay, so a bit of an update. Um, got the parts out of here, they're all I did some grinding, cleaning up, and then uh, just got the first coat of paint on them. Got the feet there as well for the rig. I don't know if I showed you how I made them. Um, so I did buy some, which I didn't, in the end, I decided they weren't going to be up to the job. So I decided to make my own and trying to think of a quick way of doing it. Um, I had a root for a part spin and I actually found, I think these are like core plugs from a car. So they're sort of a, a press steel plug. Um, so just took a load of them and uh, welded some Allen key head bolts to them. The job's good. And they've got threads on. So we're just going to paint them up and what we're going to do with the bottom, we'll cut some rubber out and we'll uh, glue that to the bottom. And that's it. Feet. Um, save me buying them. Save me buying them. It didn't take too long to make, to be fair. How are we doing? So I'm sat here doing the editing for this episode, and I've realised I've made a monumental error in which I didn't do an ending. Um, so I've either not shot the ending, or I've inadvertently deleted it from my phone. So here is my ending. I uh, just want to say thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, we're moving on really well. We've got paint on all the parts for the rig now. So it's just a case of bolting those back together. And then obviously we've got the seat to attack, which will be the next episode. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you to you for watching the film. And if you, you know, if you wouldn't mind, please, if you haven't done so already, just click down below, give us a like and a subscribe. And also, if you see anything on the films um, that I'm doing right or I'm doing wrong, then feel free to comment down below. I'm more than happy to take advice from you guys. If you've got any uh, tips or you, you think I, there's a better way I could do something, then please do let me know. I'm, I'm not going to bite. I'm more than happy to take any advice that's out there. Other than that, uh, yeah, just a big thank you to everyone. Um, I'm really blown away. The channel has grown amazingly. We've actually over, we've doubled the subscribers um, in these first three films, which is amazing. So the channel is growing a lot quicker than I anticipated, and we've got some really good views, which is cool, and obviously a lot of positive feedback as well, which is which is great. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.